Good morning, everybody. So today we are going to talk about how we can slim our models down. Um, this should be pretty fun because it gives you a lot of tips on how you can apply this in your project like right away. So let's get started. So here we have an example of a model that has grown too big. And we are going to tackle this. But first, let's look at the model. So first of all, we have like a bunch of fillable uh, properties. Then we have our hidden, we have our casts, uh, then we have a boot that listens to a couple of uh, events. So for example, when the user is being created, we build a lead field on the user. Uh, then when the user is actually created, we send them an, a welcome email, which I didn't uh, properly set up, but that's not important. And then when we are removing the user and they are not force deleting, we will uh, adjust their email because the email is a unique field in our database and we don't want to have a collision when the user tries to create another account. Then we have a couple of helpers. So we have uh, functions like is admin, is moderator, is paid customer. Then we have uh, a function that returns a status of the customer. So uh, either can be disabled or it can be active when the team has active subscription or it can be inactive. Then we have a helper that uh, returns the status caller. So for example, maybe we need this in some blade view that, uh, you know, colors their status or something. This is kind of uh, example, but you know, let's roll with it. Then we have like a relationship and this model just has one, but that's not important. And then we have a bunch of scopes. So we have an active scope, inactive, admin, moderator, adult, child, uh, accepted terms of service, not accepted terms of service, and logged in last week. As you can see, this is like a simple model. It has a couple of helpers for us, and it's already 150 lines of code. And it's kind of messy. So now let's try and find a way to clean it up. So let's start with the fillable uh, property. So this is something that we can generally remove if our app is constructed properly. So if our controllers use uh, request validated instead of like request all, uh, then we can remove it because then we know we are working with safe data and we don't need this protection from Laravel. So let's just change the field to guard it. And that would be an empty array. And let's remove the comment because we know what it does. Then we have our hidden and this is okay to keep here. We have our cast. That's okay. Let's just remove the comment. Now for the boot methods. That's not all the lines of code, but uh, we can simplify it by moving it to a separate place that would be able to handle all of the events that our user emits. So the place where we can move this entire logic is called an observer. And this is something that we can create using PHP artisan make observer, and then we just need to name it. So let's name it user observer. We can also pass the model, so it will automatically inject that for us. Now, an observer is something that just listens to those events. So let's uh, remove the, the comments that Laravel created for us. What I will do is I will just copy this entire blo block of codes and remove the function from our model and just paste it here for now. So let's create a test function and just paste it here. So when our user is being uh, is creating, we just need to generate the, the ULIT ID. Let's just do this. Then let's create one for created. And here we can simply notify the user uh, and send them the welcome email. And for the deleting, I will just copy the, the comments uh, deleting and here we can paste it. Now what we also need to do is connect our observer to our model. So the way we can do this is to go to our app service provider and then in our boot methods, uh, we just need to write user observe user observer. And this will work. So the next thing is those damn roles. Uh, here we can see that we have two helpers that checks if the user is admin or is moderator. So the way we can handle this is by creating an enum. So I just created a blank enum in our app enums directory. You can place it wherever you want. Uh, it works best with like DDD when you have a separate folder for enums that are directed, that are connected to your user, but you can structure it however you want, to be honest. 
So here what we can do, and we can see that our role corresponds to a string. So we can make this enum a string-based enum, and we can just list our cases. So an admin would be admin, you'd have a moderator, and then you'd have like a, or a, a regular, doesn't matter. So the first improvement, obviously, would be to do something like uh, user enum. Oh, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be user enum, it should be user role enum. Let me just rename that. Or just user role, whatever you prefer. Uh, so here we could just compare the role to user role enum and then just check the admin role. And here we could do user role enum and then check the moderator. Now what we also need to do is add this to our cast. So our role would cast to user role enum class. And now this would work. However, there is one more thing that we could do. We could simply uh, move these two helpers to our enum itself. And then we could just compare this to a proper case. So now the only difference would be that we wouldn't be doing uh, user is admin. What we would do is user role is admin, which to me, I think it's even better. Now, this helper is fine, uh, honestly, if like this is something that we reach for often, it could be, uh, it could still live on our team. So now for the status. The status here uh, is something that's more advanced because uh, we can't just save it to the database because it's based on like, you know, some dynamic properties. However, this is also a great use case for enum. So let me just create user status enum. Okay, so here is our enum. We just need to add the cases. So we have an active status. We have inactive status. We also have disabled status. So the first improvement is obviously just changing the string here, to returning user status enum, and then disabled user status enum active and user status enum inactive. And this will return user status enum. The biggest benefit of, of this change and, uh, is that we can quickly improve this. Whenever you have a helper and it has two verbs, so for example, get status caller. It's not just get status, it's, it's get something from related resource. It's a great place to, to extract the logic to a separate place. So here, let's just copy this out and paste it in our enum. And what we could do is simply return a match on this. And if it's active, we can return green. If it's inactive, we can return gray. And if it's disabled, we can return red. And here we can rename it to get color. So now you could simply get the color by doing user, get status, get color. And this is a nice improvement. However, I think when it comes to this, uh, we could take it a step further. So uh, maybe we want to fake that the status is like a first class field on this, this user. Uh, in that case, what we could do is we could simply use Laravel's getters. So we could name it get status attribute. And this would basically allow us to simply do user status and then get color. Now, if you don't like this, that it maybe takes too much space for you, what you could also do is you could create a function here. So we could do like public static function for user. We could pass the user, uh, I'm sorry, public static function for user. Here we could pass the user model. And we could simply replace the call with user, and this would return this. And now here we could simply return user status enum or user this. So if that's an approach that you like, and this is something this is also something that you could follow. Now we have our relationship, this is completely fine. So now let's kill the biggest monster, the scopes. If you want to reuse some like query logic you tend to have a lot of scopes on your models. And the way to clean it up is quite simple, actually. Uh, we can just create a custom query class. Also, I, I just noticed that I did a typo. Uh, we had an observer here. It should be user observe. 
So yeah, back to our example. Um, in our app directory, we could create a new directory called Query Builders. And inside of it, we could create a new class. It's called User Query Builder. And this class would extend uh, an eloquent builder. Now, what's really cool is that Laravel under the hood, whenever you create a new, whenever you make any calls to the builder, it calls a new eloquent builder function. So we could simply extend that function called new eloquent builder. And here we can simply return new user query builder and then just pass the query. And this will return a user query builder. Now we could take all of those scopes, basically remove them, place them here. And the only thing that we need to do is remove the scope and lowercase the function call. So this basically allows us to have a separate place where we can define all of the logic for our queries. And, you know, they also read better and you can set your IDE where this provides a much better auto completion. We also need to do one more thing. We need to replace all of those builder uh, params in our scopes. So let me just select them. And then we just need to replace builder with this. So going back to our user, we can see how clear everything now is. We have a separate place for everything. We can easily add more. We can easily add more things in either our enums or our builder or our observer, and it won't bloat our model. So I hope you did find it useful. If you did, please remember to give me a like. <laughs> please do. And uh, I'm happy to hear your thoughts in the comments. So let me know what you think about this uh, specific pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.